Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for attending this afternoon session. So we like to keep things simple and easy. We'll just give you the bare essentials, the very basic things you need to know before you start investing in the stock market. We noticed in the poll survey that some, uh, some members of our audience this afternoon already have a basic knowledge about stock market investing. Our, the second part of our presentation to be presented by our guest broker this afternoon, Eagle Equities Inc., might be of interest to you. All right, so for the first part of our presentation, I'll give you just the very basic things. Number one, what are stocks? Number two, how do you invest? And number three, what are the available products in the stock market? All right, so We'll start the, the very basic definition. What are stocks? Stocks are just shares of ownership in a company. Again, stocks are just shares of ownership in a company. When you own a stock or you own a share, you are a part holder, part owner or a shareholder or stockholder of that business. Now think of companies as a huge pizza. Pizzas, they have slices. Think of one slice as equal to one stock and that represents your share of the company. But in real life, of course, companies are so huge, the pizza is so big with so many slices. Our own company, for example, the Philippine Stock Exchange Inc. has more than 80 million slices. And through the stock market, any investor could own few slices of this huge company. You could own 10 slices, 20, 30, 50, or 100 slices. The same goes with the other companies listed in the stock market, like Jollibee, SM, Meralco, Pure Gold, Universal Rubina Corporation, and many others. So owning few slices of these companies makes you a part owner of those big businesses. Now, for us to know how these stocks ended up in the stock market, think of companies who used to be private, private companies who would like to expand their business, who would like to grow their business. Now, if they would like to uh, take their business further by expanding, they would need huge amount of capital. If that company doesn't want to take out a loan, they could instead open up the ownership of their business by selling few slices of their company, sell that to investors, in return, they would have the investor's money, which they now call their capital, and they could use that in order to finance their expansion plans. Now, that kind of activity, that kind of capital raising activity is called an initial public offering or IPO. And the IPO, during the IPO, the investors are buying the shares straight from the company. It is said to occur in what we call the primary market because you, the investor, you are directly buying the shares from the company that is uh, doing the public offer. Now, the initial public offering or IPO period is just a short period of time. It usually lasts five trading days. If it gets extended, 10 trading days. If you, the investor, are interested to buy the shares of that company that's conducting an IPO, you should be able, you should uh, do that or you should buy the shares during the said IPO period. If you miss to buy during that IPO period, there's no way for you to buy the shares straight from the company, but you could instead buy those shares from those investors who were able to buy during the IPO. And that occurs in what we call the secondary market, and your secondary market is your stock market. By the way, for those who are curious, how would I know if there are companies or if there's a company that's going to conduct an IPO? Everything is announced on PSE's online disclosure system, that's PSE Edge. There is a free mobile app that's available for Android and Apple users. Please do take advantage of that. You could download it for free, or you could also visit the desktop version, that's edge.pse.com.ph. You will find there all the disclosures, all the announcements coming from the exchange and the already listed companies, including the new ones, meaning those companies who are conducting or who will conduct their IPO or initial public offering. All right, so once you own shares, how could you earn from it? There's just two ways. One, you could earn through dividends, okay? You could hold on to the shares. If the company did well the previous year, for example, they may decide to distribute dividends to all of the stockholders, meaning all of the owners of that company. 
you may uh, you would know the dividend the dividend declarations or companies declaring dividends also through PSE Edge. That's why I mentioned earlier that it, it, uh, it's a very useful app, especially for investors. Now, the second way to earn through the stock market is through price appreciation. Now, this is when you were able to buy the price, buy the stock at a low price, and once, for example, it got to higher price, uh, it um, increased. Uh, the price increased and uh, you like that particular price, you could sell your shares to realize your gain. So just two ways through, to earn through the stock market. One is through dividends and number two is through price appreciation. Now, if you are investing, you would probably one of these days take a look at the monitor the stock market through ANC or other um, news outfit. This is the usual scene on the trading floor of the PSE, the Philippine Stock Exchange. Our uh, trading floor is located at the PSE Tower in BGC. Now, um, how do you uh, invest in the stock market? How do you participate? Very easy. Just follow these three easy steps. Number one, you need to open a trading account to the PSE accredited stock broker. Please note that no investor could go directly to the PSE. Everyone must go through a stock broker, whether that stock broker is traditional or online. And that broker has to be PSE accredited. We'll show you the list later. Once you have a trading account, you could fund your account and go ahead, start buying your first stock. So in the PSE, we have 131 PSE accredited stock brokerage firms. If you're interested in the online ones, 27 of them are online. The rest are non-online or what we call traditional stock brokers. Where would you find the list of PSE accredited stock brokers? It's on the PSE website, pse.com.ph. Just click trading participants. Brokers are also called trading participants. We have a separate tab for the online brokers and the other tab is for the full directory of all the PSE accredited stock brokerage firms. Uh, let's go through the list of the PSE accredited online brokers. We have AB Capital Securities, MyTrade by Abaco Securities, AP Securities, BASEC, BDO Nomura, BPI Trade, Coherco Trade PH, COL Financial, iTrade, to trade Asia, First Metro Set of the Metro Bank Group, HDI Securities, Investors Online, Jaka Securities, Lucky Securities, Make Trade of Maybank ATR Kim Eng, MSI Trade, Optimum Online, Phil Stocks, RCBC Easy Trade, Regina Capital, Timson Trade. UCPB Securities, U Trade, VC Trade, Wealth Securities, and also very soon our guest broker, Eagle Equities Inc., will be launching their online trading platform. So you could watch out for that. So you may open a trading account in any of these PSE accredited stock brokers. You would notice some of the names are quite familiar, they are affiliated with a bank, for example. You could approach the bank. For example, you know BDO Nomura or let's say Metro Bank or uh, let's say RCBC, you could go ahead, approach them and ask them how you may open a trading account with them. Sometimes what they do is, or, or what they do usually with those stock brokerage firms affiliated with a bank, they could link your savings account to your trading account so that every time that you would like to buy a stock, they would source the funding from your savings account. So they have that kind of convenience. Uh, for others, uh, they also have a website or for everyone actually, they have a website. Uh, so you could click on any of the names and then you'll be diverted to their website. You'll see there the list of requirements, the documentary requirements that you would need to submit in order for you to have your trading account open, okay? Okay, so that's for our brokers. Now, if you are going to start investing, what are the products that you could buy through the stock market? We have, of course, 267 companies listed in the Philippine Stock Exchange, 267 businesses for you to choose from. These 267 companies 
are summarized by the PSEI or our benchmark index. So the PSEI is the main index of the Philippine Stock Exchange and it is composed of 30 of the biggest and most traded companies in the stock market. These are also the same companies which are tagged as blue chips, creme de la creme, okay? So uh, best of the best. If it were a class uh, classroom, or if it will, yeah, if, it's, if it were a classroom, these are the uh, honor rolls of that class, okay? Uh, the PSE reviews the composition of the index twice a year, that's every March and every September, and we make sure that these companies are compliant with our requirement. They have to remain to be the biggest and most traded companies in the market. Otherwise, they'll be replaced with a company that's more compliant with the PSE's criteria. Now, for our investors, again, if you would like to buy a stock, you could select from among the 267 companies. If you're not familiar with all the 267 companies, which is most likely uh, the case, you could go ahead and look for your first stock from among the list of the blue chip companies, and this list could be found on the PSEI list. Go visit the PSE website, pse.com.ph, click PSEI. It will give you the drop-down list of the 30 blue chip companies, as well as their real-time price performance and other information, of course, about the company. So you could get to know more about these blue chip companies. So those are your options. Now there are uh, investors also that aside from stock picking, they would like to buy the entire PSEI company or the, 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 uh, the entire PSE index, the entire PSEI. Um, so they do that by buying mutual funds or UITFs. The thing with mutual funds and UITFs is that they are not listed, they are not traded at the Philippine stock market, but we have a product that's very similar to that, and we call that your ETF or exchange traded fund. It's not actually a foreign product, it is, uh, it's not an alien product, it's easy to understand. Your ETF is just the hybrid of the usual mutual fund that you know, slash UITF, plus we've incorporated to that the features of a stock. So with mutual funds and UITFs, the, uh, the, the setup or the structure is, or the, yeah, the idea is we're small investors, why don't we pool our money and then we are going to use this pooled fund or this pooled money in order to buy underlying shares. There is usually a fund manager that does that, that does the selection of which companies or which stocks get into the, bus the basket. One of the salient features also of mutual funds and UITFs is that there is usually this holding period. You have to hold the unit or you have to hold the product for two, three, five years or for X period of time. And if you withdraw before the end of that holding period, you could, but, but there are charges or you'd be slapped with a fee. Okay, uh, what do we know so far about stocks? Stocks to be traded anytime in the stock market as long as we're open. We're open every day except holidays and weekends. There's continuous trading from 9.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. So it is this feature, and it also uh, the prices are real time, is this feature that uh, we've incorporated the features of mutual fund and UITF. Your ETF now is actually just a mutual fund slash UITF, but you trade it just like any other stock. So when you buy an ETF, you trade it just like any other stock, you buy and sell it just like an individual stock, and there is no holding period. You buy and sell it at will. So Filipino, kung kailan mo gusto. Pwede mo siyang bilhin kung kailan mo gusto. You could also sell it anytime you want. Okay? Okay, so back to uh, what we discussed earlier about mutual funds and UITF. So similar to that, the ETF also is this pooled fund with underlying shares. But for an ETF company, it's very specific. Once they list in the stock market, they need to identify or they need to identify an index to follow. So say, for example, that ETF company chose the PSEI as its benchmark index. The ETF company then is only allowed to buy those shares that make up that particular index. So it shows PSEI, for example, it will only uh, include in its basket the list 
or the the individual stocks which are included in the PSEI, meaning your 30 blue ship companies. If it's not on the list of 30 blue of the 30 blue ship companies, the ETF company will not include that in its basket. It will get easier, don't worry. Now think of those 30 blue ship companies, the list which I showed you earlier, think of those as 30 different kinds of fruits. So say for example, your Ayala are these apples, oranges are your SM, Globe are your bananas, and Jollibee are your uh, oranges, okay? So 30 different kinds of fruits to represent the 30 blue chip companies, the 30 PSEI members. What did the ETF company do? Repackage those into smaller baskets such that one basket is equal to one ETF share, okay? So if I buy one basket, am I just invested in a single stock, in a single company? The answer is no. You are exposed to the performance or you are buying not just that single company, but all the companies or all the stocks which are included in the basket. And the nice thing about it, if you realize, is that it actually gives you instant diversification because you are exposing yourself to the performance of all the 30 companies which are included in the ETF basket. Okay, so if you hold mutual fund units or UITFs, and they typically, they usually call it the index, index fund, it's actually the same product, very similar, except that mutual funds and UITS could not be traded, you could not buy them, you could not sell them through the Philippine Stock Exchange. Okay, so when you sell your UITF or your uh, mutual fund, you approach the bank to sell your UITF or you approach your favorite mutual fund company or its authorized agent to sell your mutual fund units. Okay, so you are indirectly, that way you are indirectly investing in the stock market. Directly investing in the stock market is opening an account with a PSA accredited broker and selecting ETF as the product and it is you yourself you are directly buying that product. You're doing the direct buying and selling of the ETF. Okay, so with that, I hope your options are clear. Just to recap, you have your 267 companies listed in the stock market. If you want the very familiar names, you could go with the list of 30 blue chip companies that's laid out in the PSEI list, the main index of the stock market. If you want to buy the entire PSEI basket, you could do so by the, buying the ETF directly through the stock market or indirectly by approaching your favorite mutual fund company or their authorized agents or the banks with their UITF. Okay, I hope with that you're able to learn something and learn the very basic, just the very essential things you need to know about the stock market. Again, stocks are just shares of ownership in a company. You own, you earn by dividends or by price appreciation. And through our second speaker, uh, you would get to know more about the types of investors. You could be in the stock market for the long term, or as you get braver, yes, as you have more courage in the stock market, you may, you may want to venture into being a short-term investor also. Second thing, you invest in the stock market legitimately only through only by opening an account to the PSE accredited stock broker. Since no investor could go directly to the PSE, everyone must have a PSE accredited stock broker in order to start buying and selling stocks. And for your options, you have your 267 companies whose shares are listed and traded in the stock market. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, keep on listening for our second speaker who will give you a lot more details about the stock market, whether you are a long-term investor or a short-term investor. Thank you. Uh, this is Fernando Martinez from Eagle Equities, Inc. Uh, we have been in business since 1993, a trading participant. I am also a licensed broker with local and international accreditations. Uh, this afternoon, I will be discussing market psychology. And for a better understanding, we have to understand what are the three factors that move markets. Number one, we have fundamental data. It is the intrinsic value of a company. Uh, most of, more often than not, you will encounter passing 
also uh, company and of course you have to understand the economic indicator country so price and uh, for data or technical analysis is both an art and a science because the data that you have is based on previous prices and volume that's the scientific part now uh, as you interpret the technical data that's where the art comes in each individual have his own interpretation thus on those two uh, factors that move markets fundamental analysis and technical data you may need to experience uh, it, it in a more uh, longer time frame setting in, in a seminar, perhaps probably a day or two. Now on the third factor that move market, market psychology, market psychology is emotions that drive prices higher or lower. This is our topic for today and we will be discussing it in about 30 minutes. Now we have to understand that price is all perception. You have to gauge by yourself how much you are willing to pay for a particular purchase. Perception becomes reality once it is paid. Why is it so? As I discussed earlier, fundamental data, there is what we call book value. Book value pertains to the particular uh, value of a company based on its fundamental data. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be the market value of that particular stock. There are cases wherein book value of a stock is at one peso, but the market value is at five. Because you have to consider a lot of factors when you are buying the stock. Future earnings, uh, technical analysis, and of course, uh, news about the stock or development about the stock. Now, you also have to understand the four stages of bull market. You can also relate this to a four stages of a stock. Most often than not, bull market are born on pessimism. When everybody is feeling low and nobody wants to enter the stock market, more often than not, it's the time to get into the stock market. Number two, they grow on skepticism. People are not easily convinced when market starts moving up. And most of the time, they come in on number three, when they mature on optimism. But most of the new investors, or what we call the newbies, they are the ones who come in during euphoria, a stage wherein the bull market die. Now, I will give you an example on what I'm talking about. On December 13, 2017, I posted on my social media account the euphoria on bitcoins. I said, and I quote, in any market, equities, forex, futures and commodities, bonds, options and of course cryptos euphoria is a clear sign for you to get out now the first five markets above have been up liquidity and processes because they are regulated by a particular exchange so if you sell and withdraw your funds you have the processes to protect you but on the last one there ain't no regulate regulatory body that will give you the processes on how to sell and withdraw your particular account. On this particular chart, you can see that on December 2017, Bitcoin reached a high of around 20,000 pesos. On my social media account, I called Bitcoin to have reached the euphoria stage on December 13. On December 18 or 20, the, the Bitcoin craze started to lose uh, luster and then started to go down now is am i a seer or is it pure luck no it's because i understood how the four stages of a bull market works and you too should take a close consideration on this one a question why do most people lose money in the stock market the answer is simple people make emotional and not rational decisions we're just human beings and we are always affected by our emotions most important and will probably haunt you to the last day you're trading, greed and fear. This is the emotion that affects most of in investors in the stock market, in any kind of market there is. There's what we call going long term. 
when you when you're a new investor in the stock market more often than not you will be told you will be told by most of the brokers to go long term buy blue chips however in reality this does not happen uh, you you wanted to go for the quick and the short term trades and you always fall into this trap of greed and fear the real story about greed and fear is this once you are you have attended seminars you have learned and studies studied about the market there there will always be a time that you will be ready to purchase your first stock and then you will prepare for your trading plan and the trading plan says you will buy it at one peso and then you will have a target price of 150 for a 50 percent appreciation which is good now after all the trading plans that you did the stock did went to 150 and after hitting 150 you will assess the situation again and you will find out that uh, at 150 most likely the stock could continue to go to two pesos so you will now withhold the selling at 150 and will decide for a target price of two pesos and lo and behold it did hit two pesos and then at two pesos you will now decide to hold and sell the stock until it reaches three pesos but the worst thing that could happen is that it will not materialize from two pesos it will go back down to 150 and then what will you tell yourself you will tell yourself after reading several books oh it's just a correction nothing goes up on a straight line true enough so instead of selling at 150 and settling for a 50 percent a profit you will now decide to hold on to the stock and wait till it gets back to two pesos now the problem is it goes back down to one peso now you're faced with a zero profit and zero loss dilemma and more often than not people who are faced with this one will say to themselves that okay i've seen this at two pesos it will be stupid to sell at one peso so you will now wait again to reach it for the stock to reach at two pesos the problem the following day it goes down to 80 centavos now you're facing a 20 percent loss coming from a hundred percent profit the problem with this one more often than not the wives or the husband starts calling you they will ask you and you bought a stock at one peso my boss said it reached two pesos did you sell and what is the excuse the common excuse that investors or new investors will tell their husbands and wife han we are in for the long term that's the real story of going long term because if you have the chance to book the profit at 50 cents in a week in a month or three months it doesn't make any sense for you to wait for two or three years to book the same amount of profit now that is just an example of greed and fear when the stock was going up you are affected by the emotion of greed you don't want to sell you don't want to follow your trading plan now when the starts when the stock starts going down you are now affected by the emotion of fear you are afraid that if you sell at current prices it might go up the following day there is no logical explanation on this one you have to experience it by yourself me with my 24 years background in the stock market continues to be affected by greed and fear but hopefully you can you can you can experience this as soon as possible so that you will know how to deal with it when you start uh investing real and big amount of or a big big amount of money now how to solve the problem of emotion you should be smart ask yourself each time you make a trading decision is this smart market cannot take away money from you unless you allow it and that's not being smart that is true you allow yourself to be affected by greed and fear you will surely lose your money now what are the psychological trading mistakes that most investors commit we have number one fear on missing out fomo you take every single trade you see and then you oversize your position more often than not, this happens when you buy a stock and you're stuck with it and it's not moving. And then you open your social media account and you will hear people talking about a stock that went 
30, 40, 50, or even 100% higher in less than a month. People tend to sell their position and chase the one that is high flying. Now, the problem with this one is that you are entering already when the stock is already up. So most open than not, you will lose a lot if you will do FOMO. Now, how to avoid FOMO? Solution is you stay away from chat rooms and social media. It is very dangerous place for you, especially newbies or new investors, because we have a lot of people that tend to take advantage of the situation. Uh, you will see people there that are uh, promoting stocks that have already gone up by 40, 50, or 100%. And new investors, more often than not, fall into this trap. Number two, revenge trading. I need to regain my losses. Can't get any worse. The problem with this one is that you tend to get married with a stock. You chose a stock, you provided a trading plan, you bought it, but your plan did not materialize. So what happens is that on the way down, you kept on buying it, or every time it goes up higher, you don't want to sell it because you want, you want to reach your target prices. Uh, this is one of the most common mistakes by new investors. The, the, the normal thing to do is that you have to just cut your positions and then transfer to another stock and do another trading plan. But it's very difficult as it is to buy. It is also very difficult as it is to take losses. So what is the solution? You trade smaller sizes. And then if you lose and transfer to another position, you, you should do what is necessary and then recover slow, slowly but surely and then letter C most important thing is before you commit or take the plunge on buying into any stock do paper trading it doesn't hurt because you will learn from paper trading number three psychological trading mistake gambler policy uh, if you've been to a casino and played Russian roulette you will only bet on two colors, red or black. More often than not, uh, casino players bet on a color if the odds, uh, 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 let's say, uh, the Russian roulette has uh, produced on a 10 con continuous rolls uh, black color. You will now, on the 11th roll, you will now bet on the red color. But that is not true because uh, every spin there is, there is a 50-50% chance that blue or red will appear on the winning column. Now, what is the solution on this uh, gambler policy? You have to treat each trade independently from any past trades. You don't have to commit yourself to one stock and tell yourself, if I have been losing in this stock for five times, perhaps on the sixth time, I will make money. That is not true. Money is made in the sitting. Some people call this sit tight and eat pussy. This is my take on this one. Money is made on the sitting, not trading. My take only true when you sit on a winner and not on a losing stock. Patience is a virtue, only if you're patient at the right time. And this means you have to be patient on winning stocks and should be impatient on losing stocks. The problem is people tend to be patient on losing stock, which makes them lose more than they can afford. And impatient on a winning stock, which makes them miss out on huge gains. This is just an example of what is in store of what I did uh, in Cebu and hopefully in the future seminars that I will conduct. This is an example of a stock that you should not be sitting on. This is ferro-nickel. It had a high of around 12 pesos, went down to as low as 2, even lower. If you have been sitting on this stock, you will not be making money for a long time. Another one is CHP, Semex Holding. Same thing. If you have sat on this stock, you have been losing a lot. And you not only losing money and position, you will also be losing opportunities to buy other good stocks. 
Same thing with PINMA, PPG. Now, this is an example of sitting on a winning stock. If you sat on this, you would have made from 360 all the way to 18 pesos. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to hold from 360 to 18 pesos. You have to trade it accordingly on the based on support and resistances. Now, on, on a separate seminar or on a separate venue, we will be discussing the same uh, technical analysis, uh, more in-depth so that you can understand it. Now, um, I think we have more than 100 attendees. Now, each one of you have different risk and reward. Uh, okay, we have around 158 attendees. Each one of you have different risk tolerance. That is why it's very important that you understand the categories of a stock market investor. Number one is investing. Investing means you are in it for the long run. You believe that the company will continue to grow and is satisfied with the dividends being given out by the company. In fact, you don't even have to worry about the prices if you're doing investing. Stocks you buy are usually the blue chips or heavy capitalized company. This is a low risk, low reward uh, for, for our investors. Now, I don't want to uh, dampen your hopes on this one, but for you to realize some real money or profits in investing, you have to be buying a lot of shares of that particular company or that particular blue chips company. Because uh, sorry to disappoint, even, even those blue chip companies usually give low, low, very low dividends to its investors. Now, if you're holding 10,000 shares of, let's say, a particular company and it gives out 30, 30 centavo dividends, that's the only return that you'll be get, getting in a month or even a year. Now, this, this doesn't mean that you will shy away from this one. If you want to test the market initially, this is a good category for you. Number two, trading. You are in it to make a profit through price fluctuation or price appreciation. Stocks move up and down in prices and traders take advantage by, by buying low and selling high. You will encounter terms such as support and resistance. Risk tolerance for this one is medium risk and medium rewards. More often than not, all of uh, most of the investors do trading because it's very rewarding. But again, you have to have a clear understanding of technical analysis or technical data for you to do this type of category. Next, speculating. It's not only in the show business that we hear rumors. Listed companies usually are subjected from hearsay or rumors. Whether the information is true or not, investors love to get in on a stock subjected to speculation because of the high risk but high reward nature of this category. Now, what I'm going to teach you is to protect you from losing a lot on speculating. I call this the DNA of speculation. New investors are not familiar with this one because uh, you have to be to have a good knowledge of technical analysis. Now, as I said, on a separate on a separate venue, we will be discussing technical analysis soon. Um, speculation occurs on a stock that is not moving. If you are looking at the chart right now, you will see that uh, previous before the the stock started moving higher, it was just basically flat, no volume at all, except for the one indicated with smart money. Smart money usually occurs at the stage when the stock prices are very low and not moving at all. But there is some accumulation, as you can see on the green volume spikes on the chart. Now, after the, start, the stage of smart money, what comes next is the prints of the smart money. The prices go higher, a little bit higher, and then when you open your social media, media accounts, you will hear people telling you to buy this, to buy that, or else you will miss the, the ride to the moon uh, and other terms that they will use. The problem with this one, most new investors ends up on the soccer stage. 
Now, why is it so? Because you are a new investor. If you're a new investor, you do not know who the smart money is. And if you do not know who the smart money, you are not friends of the smart money. As I said, more often than not, you will end up as the suckers, the ones that are buying the shares of the smart money and the friends of the smart money at the top. And you can see that the volume spike usually occurs at the top. Now, if you are going into speculation, you have to understand these stages very well. This will help you save a lot of money and then probably make a little or more if you know when to get in and when to get out. Now, controlling our emotions in the market, you have to trade with conviction, not fear. Follow your trading plan. Listen to the market because the market is always right. Even if you made a plan and the plan says that it will reach 150 and it did not, instead it went down, don't insist on your plan. You always have to listen to what the market is saying. Know when to quit and when to push. Believe me, you'll need this. Stock market is a very, very... Uh, stressful environment whether you're making money or losing you need to quit and give yourself some time plan your trade and trade your plan easier said than done but you have to do it now you also need discipline patience and experience probably you have discipline patience based on your uh experience in in, in your school school days or in your work uh in your work but experience definitely you need to you have to have this uh, in the market you have to open an account uh, get the guts to push the buy or sell button that's the only way you will have experience in the market 